Hi everyone and welcome back for part 2 in our mini series in cave splines. In the first part we generated our cave spline to make a cave based along our spline which we can run, uh, run right through and also showed how to put it into the landscape too. In this episode we're going to add the uh, ability to have rooms in our spline and uh, make it fork and do all sorts of things. So the way this works is we're going to add rooms to the end and start of these cave splines. And for this to work, I've already made the static mesh that we're going to be using, which is here. So nothing fancy, it's a simple room where you go in and then out. And this, funny enough, is also how you do forking paths. So if you do a forking path, you just generate the forking path mesh and have two outs. Okay, but this is just a basic example to show you how this works. Not the fanciest model in the world, not the best textured in the world, but quickly made it in about 10 minutes, so it'll do. Now, when I made it in Maya, uh, I made sure my UVs here matched as close as I could to my normal cave tunnel pieces. Uh, it's not the end of the world if they don't match up, because if they don't match up, you're typically going to be uh, covering up these edges um, with other static meshes anyway uh, to hide the seams. But let's move on. So for this to work, I need to make a new blueprint class, actor, and I'm going to call this cave room parent. And this is going to be the parent class for all of our uh, cave rooms. And I'll make a child of this. So right click, click create child blueprint of this. And I'm going to call this cave room one. And in cave room one, <clears throat> I'm going to add a static mesh to this and the static mesh is going to be my cave room one. Now important thing to note is when I model this you need to have at least one of the entrances or exits to be lined up with zero zero zero. So if I show you my thing in mail you can see how it's lined up with this end in zero zero zero. This makes it so it's easy to connect it later on. Uh, let's just go back here. Okie dokie, so with that now done, uh, what we're also going to do is click compile and uh, we'll come back to this later on. Let's get this to actually generate the room on the end of our spline. So I'm going to go into my cave spline uh, generator <clears throat> and we're going to make a new function. So go to your functions and click plus function and we're going to go and call it add end room. Now we're also going to need a new variable, so go down to the variables and click plus. And this is going to be called end room, and it's going to be of the type cave room parent class. And click uh, instance editable, and click compile. <coughs> now. We've got this cave room parent chosen because that means we can have multiple cave rooms uh, all generating from the same parent. Therefore, we can make this variable work for all of them rather than just one because it's a child of this parent. So, the add end room, what we can do is find, get the final point in our spline. So, drag your spline out. Get, you want to get the spline uh, points. Is it number of points? Just type in points. Uh, da -da -da. Get number of spline points and we're going to take one away from that integer return value reason being is that this is going to return um a one base number so if you've got three spline points it will turn three however we're going to make a reference to a spline point and they are zero based so we need to take one away from it so we can access spline point zero spline point one and spline point two still three points but named differently so now we've got that value we're going to drag out from our spline again and get location at spline point. And then from there, we're going to hook up our point index like so. And our coordinate space, we're going to change from local to world. The reason why we would do that is because local can refer to just this actor. Um, but we were going to spawn something into the world. Um, so we need to generate a world value. So to add an end room, we're going to come out of here and go spawn actor from class. And then from here, we're going to choose, oh, sorry, connect up our end room variable like so. 
and to connect our return value from our get location to our spawn transform just going to right click on spawn transform and split it and hook up the location value and that's it um, what we need to do now is click on the add end room function start point and on the right hand side you'll see call in editor tick this box and click compile this allows us to if I show you click on here I've now got a button down here where I can add an end room and quite simply I'll just choose what end room I want to use so cave room 1 and click add end room obviously I've done it the wrong scale no problem we just rescale that up if you ever want to rescale something quickly in here I think I've done it three times bigger last time I've done this uh, go down to the bottom where you see the import settings import uniform scale and three and go re-import save and there you go it now adds the room so my seams aren't perfect um, but we cover up those edges if, if we want um, you can also move this separately as well because it's a separate object you can do so um, but by and large that's how it's done okay um, but how do you carry on the spline down this route well on your cave room object we can add a spline here and do exactly the same code we've done previously. So on here, we're going to go add spline. And then from here, I'm going to connect that to the slot. Oh, that doesn't have my connection. Like so. And all I'm going to do it's going to my cave spline code here and copy this whole function into here so build cave spline just simply connect it up and we just need to put in the variables here so section length we need and that's going to be float and I think that was the only one we had yep and compile it and the next thing we need to do is go on the construction script and copy that code over from here to here so the build k function will be this one here pilot and now I should be able to click on here oh why is that spawning from there okay so the reason why it wasn't building from the correct location is because I accidentally moved the spline component itself rather than the spline points so you want to when you click on it don't click and move it straight away click on the point again until you see the tangent and then simply just move the tangent to where you want it to be instead and you'll start seeing the beginnings of your cave spline line up like so you can use this time here to line up more perfectly as well like so so that when I go into my world here let's delete that again and click add end room I can now carry on my cave down this spline and that's kind of how you do it and you could do this for the start as well it's exactly the same process um, except you just do it for a start room uh, so you do a start and end room and you can make your whole cave network out of these various room pieces and when it comes to these seams if you can't line them up perfectly uh, or as best you can the best thing to do is to make a, uh, a sort of bridging bit the column or something like that that go in between that can help bridge those seams a bit better but well, it's up to you how good you are at modeling and how patient you are you get that's the trickiest part is making them line up perfectly but that's how you make your caves and the main thing you want to do on this one is add um 
the one the other function we just added so on the cave room we got build cave spline on here we need to also do the add end room so you do exactly the same stuff so go and add end room copy that and make a new function add end room and we're going to call in editor and the end room is a variable of cave room parent class reference and that should change that there which it does and that means now when I'm calling pulling this out or oh, I can make the end room uh, editable so I can see it in the editor so I can choose my end room like so I go add end room okay when if you add it and it doesn't spawn it dead on like you want it here um, main reason you want to do that for is basically you want to change the rotation of this uh, guy here like so and you can keep on going and that's how you do a cave network uh, so I've done it a bit rough because I didn't have much time to model it but you guys can have spend much more time modeling your caves to make them look as good as possible if you've been using this system and you've enjoyed it, please post a picture below. I'd be interested to see what kind of cave networks people have been putting together uh, and seeing how they can use this. So you can put any kind of room on here, really, as long as it lines up one entrance to the zero zero. You can make this a massive room if you want. Um, it doesn't really matter too much. But thank you very much for watching. Um, we're going to do one more episode in splines uh, for caves, and um, and that will be when we can alter this actual spline cave bit uh, section by section uh, a bit nicer. Add a bit of variation to your splines. Um, but yeah, that's going to be the last bit for the cave splines. Please leave a comment below and subscribe. And if you want to support me and see the next episodes right now, head over to patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley and support me for at least a dollar. Join our Discord and uh, yeah, get chatting to us. be great to hear from you. Anyway, thanks for watching and um, I'll see you next time. Bye bye.